Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to learn about how to play the Winnower. And the Winnower is definitely one of the more complicated variations, but it's definitely worth learning. Um, you can have a very dangerous black repertoire if you learn it. Alright, so it starts with knight c3. So we're going to pin this knight. So the idea is you want to put pressure on the center, threaten to take this pawn. And let's get through all these variations. So the first one, bishop d2. Um, this is actually a blunder, because here we can just take on e4. And after he takes back, we can take on d4. If they take here, don't forget we can take check and then scoop up this bishop as well in a nice two for one deal. Alright, let's go back. And now instead of bishop d2, let's say they make a move like f3. f3 is also a blunder. We can take here, take, and then queen h4 check. Whenever this f pawn moves, we have this queen check. And we can pick up this pawn because remember this knight can't capture it because it's pinned. Alright, so let's go back. Um, now let's look at bishop d3. So bishop d3, we're going to go and play c5. c5 is a very, very common idea, just trying to hit this weak pawn. You're going to see this in a bunch of variations, not only in the winner, but just in the French. So here, if they play a3, we're going to take on c3, give them these double pawns and play c4. We're going to get some very similar positions to what you're going to see a little bit later, but here only a little bit better. So we go knight f6, knight e4, and now we have this threat. Um, he can't ever go f3 because we have queen h4 check, followed by um, g3, then knight takes g3, h takes g3, and queen takes h1. So remember, whenever that f pawn moves, look for this queen check over here. Um, and secondly, if they play take on d5, we play queen takes, and now this g2 pawn and this d4 pawn are both weaknesses. So after queen takes d5, bishop d2, we're just going to take everything. And then we just take on g2, and we're going to get a pawn up endgame, which is very, very nice for black. Um, now let's go back a little bit, back to here. So instead of bishop d3, they can go queen g4. Now against queen g4, we play actively. We go knight f6. And here, giving up this g7 pawn is not a big deal in the winner. You're going to see this idea of bunch 2, trying to get activity, and then we hit them on the dark squares. We don't go for material. We go for the pressure. And here, you can't take because it moves like this. And it's not very easy for white to play. There's a lot of pressure, and it, his king is not going to be the safest piece. Um, so queen g4, we just have that idea. And now he can play knight e2. Knight e2 is a very like underground kind of semi-popular variation. A lot of grandmasters will play this variation to kind of get you out of theory. So here you want to play take on e4, a3, so they want to get their pawn back. So we take here, knight takes, and now we're going to immediately apply pressure with knight c6. So you're going to see bishop e5 neutralizing this knight, we go knight e7. Um, generally they don't take here yet, they're going to go bishop g5 first. Now we go f6, they go back, um, and now we castle. Now they can take here, if take on e4, we go f5, knight g5, and now f4. And you can see white's pieces are already starting to become... Um, uncoordinated. So after here we have queen d5 kind of striking at all these pieces at all these targets at the same time. He take, gets rid of one, we take, um, and now he goes knight f3, knight, knight, knight back. Now we're going to open it up. We got to take advantage. We can't sit there and just let him do stuff. So here um, take and now bishop h3 just taking apart this position. Um, rook g1 if take we're going to take here and you know how is he going to guard this knight or this rook. Um, so that's how this is going to go. Um, now let's go back. So knight e2. Now the other variation is if they go queen d2. So here we just push f5, castle, and here knight d5. So the main move is pawn takes d5, but I feel like white, even though a pawn down, has a very simple plan, and this bishop is a lot dominant, more dominant than this bishop. So instead of that, we're going to go ahead and play queen takes d5. So here, even though we keep these double pawns, it keeps position sharp. So c4, we go queen d6, um, and bishop f4, and now we can sack a pawn at e5. Take and queen e7, and now they're going to take here, and now they have targets. We have the c4 pawn. Um, rook b, rook take, rook pressure on b2, the rook could go to b3, you have these two outposts. Um, and this is a lot more sharp double-edged kind of opposite color bishop game. Um, right now, this bishop isn't really doing anything, it's blockaded, and this bishop is going to be hitting the, the weak targets. So I much prefer this position. <clears throat> um, 
Now let's go back. So that's how you want to play against the 92 line. Just take and then knight c6. Now instead of that, they can go e5. All right, let's first we'll look at e takes d5. The exchange wouldn't work. Um, so here we have a very straightforward plan. Nothing too crazy. Um, if here we're happy, we're going to get this. Basically this idea is bring this bishop to f5 and you have a slight advantage. You're going to have a space advantage. Um, at some point you're probably going to double these pawns and that's just going to be the slight advantage that you need to push in this position. So it's going to go, so there's that variation, there's also a3. So we take here, same stuff. If here we're just going to go b6 and our idea is like knight e2, queen d7, castle, and bishop f5. The idea is just get something to f5. And now we have a very equal position, except he has these double pawns. Those are going to be our targets. We're going to play against these double pawns and slowly maneuver our knights in fashion like this. Maybe even get f5 to strengthen this e4 square. This is kind of the idea in this position, or these kind of positions. Um, and now let's get to the real heart of it, the real one work. The main line is going to be e5. <clears throat> so e5, first we'll go over this sideline bishop b2. So here the idea is white wants to attack the dark squares. So if we take here, um, he's going to go knight to b5. <clears throat> and then after take, take, there's no way to stop knight d6. And then our king is not going to go to safety very fast. It's going to be a little exposed in the middle. And his knight's going to have a very beautiful outpost. So instead of that, we go knight to e7. Basically, I'm going to castle as fast as possible. That way this knight on d6 doesn't do anything. So here, take, take, and now castle. And after take on c5, we go knight d7. Hitting both targets, we're guaranteed one, and then we just have a very nice playable position. With that juicy looking outpost on e4 with one with probably this knight. Okay, so that's how we go against bishop d2. Now lastly, we're going to go to a3. This is take, take, and now knight e7. The way I think about it is I want to threaten to castle as fast as possible, even though I have no intention of casting king sign. So they go queen g4 mostly, and now we go queen c7. Let him take... Let him take, and now open it up over here. So if he takes back, we have queen checked, and we just pick up this rook. And that's winning for um, black. Now, he probably, so he has to go knight e2. Now we take here, and now f4, because e5 is hanging. We just want to give up that pawn. Now we go knight c6, queen d3, and you're going to see um, now two moves. Basically, knight takes c3, or like bishop e3, or maybe even h4. But mainly those two. So bishop e3, we're going to castle queenside. Um, here we're just going to take, take, knight here. And here we're, we're okay, even though it looks like it might get too equal, because we can take on c2. And now he doesn't have time to, ex to hit us on the c file. And his king is actually very exposed. This bishop can't move because it's guarding this g2 pawn. And after rotate g2, that would be way too much. Um, so here it could go like this, king b8, and now we have a very nice playable position. Um, equal pawns too, which is another... Huge bonus here. Um, all of this for no disadvantage. <clears throat> so now let's go back and let's say knight takes c3. <clears throat> so here, knight takes c3. Um, now we want to go a6 because here his threat is knight b5. So we can't castle here because, you know, knight b5, then go knight d6. So instead, we go um, a6 first, rook b1. And here we still can't castle. Because of castle, he has queen takes a6. And after take, bishop takes, we have to play queen b7. There's no other moves. And then he's going to take here, and this is not a nice position for us to have. So first, before we do that, we go knight a5. And the, here, these you see these knights are really going to be very, very strong in their outpost. h4, now we go knight f5. Because it's g3 square is now um, weak. And here you're going to see these two knights work together. Also, we can castle here. Because um, this knight can go back to b7 after the trade on a6. Um, and once again, even though it's a white's up upon here, it definitely feels like black can be creative and open up his position, really get some attacking lines going. Okay, um, now we're going to look at the kind of like the winner, but declined, and that's if they don't go queen g4. Here you're going to see. Knight to f3 is one, and here we just do the same setup. Basically, whatever we're doing, we're going to work towards castle and queen side. And whenever they do this, we make we 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 play c4. We're going to play queen a5 first to get his bishop to come out, and then go c4. Remember this idea, because you're going to see it a couple of times. Um, if he goes bishop e2, 
uh, one sec, let it load. So bishop e2, we're going to go queen a5 once again, and you're going to see the same idea. And then we just basically lock up this side, we're going to castle over here, oh, so we're castle queen side, and then push on the king side, open it up, and start a pawn storm. Like this, 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 something like that. Okay, and now instead of uh, knight f3, if he goes a4, we're going to do the same thing, queen a5. Let him go bishop d2, and now c4. Once again, close this up. Now he can't um, he can't attack you over here, so you're just going to knight c6, bishop d7, castle queen side, and then open up on the king side. Um, so if he tries to be a little bit different, queen d2, the reason they go a4 is to try to go bishop a3. Uh, yeah, the reason they go a4 is to try to get bishop a3 in. Um, so here we just go knight c6, if bishop a3, we just take, take, and this is a free pawn. Um, and if they go like knight f3, now the same idea, something like this, and castle queen side, and we have the same kind of position that we're used to. So that is how to play the winner. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, make sure to check out wolfchess.org for lots of great lessons, puzzles, and all that kind of good stuff. Hope you guys were entertained.